Hello one and all, Richard Piper here, aka Pipes, and I'd like to welcome you all to this Eat 3D tutorial on creating a leaf generator within Substance Designer. Now, recently I've been working quite a lot in Substance Designer, trying to see how, how much you can actually do in there without using external programs, and recently I've been making a lot of things called generators. So. What the generator is, is for example, if you were creating a tiling texture or you were creating some sort of texture and you wanted to add lots of different random small things, such as stones or grass or leaves as we're going to look at here, um, you can just create one leaf or what, one blade of grass and then multiply that out and give it all different kind of blends and also bends and things like that so that you can create a tiling texture a lot quicker than going into say ZBrush or Mudbox and sculpting each leaf and then bringing them out and then compositing them together. So what we're trying to do is make it procedurally so there's no sculpting or anything like that. I still love ZBrush and uh, Mudbox and I use Photoshop and all the other programs but what I'm trying to experiment with here is just creating something completely within Substance Designer 4 and seeing how far we can actually push it for realism. So let's have a look at this this leaf generator so I've gone through before and I've looked at creating stones I've created grass as I've mentioned um, but I wanted to really try something that was more organic and also really just push the boundaries a little bit further and see what we can actually create in Substance Designer 4 so this is the actual generated leaf and as you can see it's got all the veins going down there, smaller veins inside of there, some damage, we've got different colour variation, uh, we've got the main stem running through the middle with, it, with its own colour again, all the way up to the peak there. And all this is just created through shapes and blending colours together. And then in the final output, you've got your normal map, your roughness, the albedo, because we're using physically based rendering for this one, um, a height map, uh, ambient occlusion, a mask so you can use that as the alpha as well if you want to keep the alpha separate into a separate um, map on its own uh, and also uh, a metallic node so this graph looks a little bit intimidating um, but what I'll do I'll try and walk through each of the steps that I took to create this leaf and you can see that it's quite logical and it's not as difficult as it seems once we actually get in there so I'm just gonna slightly resize the workspace so we've got the leaf here I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on so the first thing that I did obviously when looking at anything within digital art I always try and find some reference because you might know what a leaf looks like but until you look at it actually up close and you want to look at the finer details that we're trying to mimic um, you've got to go and look for some reference Google image or for this occasion I actually went outdoors Oof, and uh, went outdoors and found a, a suitable leaf and kind of had a look at that and then tried to mimic it from there so the first thing that we need to do is we need to kind of create the shape of the leaf so quite pointy at the top and filling out towards the bottom area here so to do this I've used some some nodes now these are all stock nodes this, these come with Substance Designer I've not created anything that you can't use yourself now the first thing that I did was I knew that there was a waveform node now if you ever want to search for these you just go into here type in for example wave and that will give you the waveform node there you left click and then you drag that into the canvas and then you can use it from there or what you can do is if you go into patterns I believe it may be in patterns somewhere or it might be in generate uh, noises let's have a look yeah this one's in noises so waveforms in noises but you'll also see there are other patterns that I will be using and that's in the actual patterns generators there and there's quite a few and with all these patterns you can pretty much create whatever you want because you can blend them together so the first thing that I did I created, I created a waveform so I knew that would be kind of the shape of the leaf that we're looking for and you can change um, the parameters of each node on the right hand side here so if I want to increase kind of the bulbousness of it I can just pull that up or down there's different patterns but obviously this this is gonna break because the the different patterns are for different waveforms and obviously that's not gonna look like a leaf that just looks a bit strange so if I go back down to pattern 2 this is the one that I used so perhaps that's a little bit too big um, so we can pull down the maximum there and just bring it down so already we're starting to 
create that shape of the, of the leaf. But with the waveform here, it's it's just kind of not really a leaf because the ones that I was looking at for the reference, obviously they're more bulbous towards the the back end of the of the stem here. So I went in and found a polygon two node. So for the polygon two node again, you can find that here. And I just changed its parameters because if you look, if I drag one of these in here, it comes in like like a pyramid, like a triangle. So if I take that away there, I went into there and I increased the sides to 10. So as you can see, I can bring it down and it's starting to change the bottom of the leaf, as you can see when I'm moving this. So I brought it to around about 10, kept it at a scale of 1, and I changed the curve because you can change the curve on this. And so it just it just filled it out a little bit at the bottom. And then what I needed to do is I needed to actually transform or move this shape and also squish it downwards to conform to where the waveform was. Now to do this, all I did was I selected the actual polygon 2, pressed the space bar, and then this gives you further options such as blending nodes, blurs, and a lot of these things you use regularly. So this is why they're on the space bar. Uh, if you click Transform 2D, it'll connect straight away if you've selected that. If I hadn't selected that, I'll just get rid of that for now, just pull that into there, drag that back. If I, if I just kick, click in the canvas and press transform 2D, then it's then it's separate. Uh, another thing to know is, um, I'll just do that again quickly, if it's um, kind of like an orangey yellow color, that's for RGB, and if it's gray, that's grayscale. So at the moment we're working in grayscale because what we're trying to really achieve here is the shape so it's like doing the normal or the height map so that's why it's grayscale so now we're looking at the transform 2d node what I did here was I just pulled the handles downwards and let me just zoom in on this here if I pull this handle downwards you can see it's starting to bring it inwards and outwards because I wanted to kind of just squish it in a little bit uh, you can also if you rotate it left and right if you just move it from there you can probably see things updating in here as well as I'm moving them around okay so I knew that I wanted the peak there to kind of attach to the stem and you can also pull it upwards make it a little bit narrower and so these are the main two basic shapes then what I needed to do was blend them together so if you do the spacebar again there's a blend node now you can see it's kind of half and half RGB or grayscale so it's either going to be uh, two RGB inputs or two grayscales, you can't mix them together. Um, so the foreground and the background. So we kind of just, if you imagine in Photoshop, we're blending two layers together. So if I click on the blend, I've done an add linear dodge because this is the blending mode. There's all different ones multiply, add, sub, and max light and max dark, darken. But for this one, I wanted to keep the white, so I choose add linear dodge. And you can see I've now got the shape that I need. So the foreground will be white and the background will be black um, within the blending node. So if I pull the opacity down you can kind of see how it's blending in together. But I want the opacity at 1 because I just want it to be one solid object. So then I transform that. Again I just did the click there, hit the space bar and do a transform 2D and I just rotated it. And you can rotate it by clicking counterclockwise here or clockwise or 180 degrees because I wanted it to just face upwards for when I was creating the actual leaf itself. Now, what I also wanted to do, I wanted to add a little bit of edge damage, such as insects may have eaten into it or things like that. Now, I'm still experimenting with this, but at the moment I found that, again, using a waveform, but choosing pattern 9 this time, gave me this kind of, kind of choppy kind of edge, edge to it. And then taking a transform 2D and rotating that, you can probably see that it's starting to break into the leaf because it's I'm using a blend node here. So I've got another one for the other side and when I turn this one you can see it's kind of breaking into it. I've used two just to give a bit of variation. Now there's probably a better way of doing that with edge detection somehow and that's something I'm looking into myself. But I wanted to just show you so far how, the progress that I'm making on this. So if we look at the blend node here, that's a multiply okay so that's blended into there and then I've got a switch grayscale this again if you ever need to find something you can just type in there you can see we've got switch grayscale there's also multi switch material switches and other ones and they, they do exactly what it says it's just gonna turn on or off 
this kind of edge noise that we've got here. So if I click into switch grayscale and click true, now it's only taking the input because it's taking inputs from the top shape and the bottom shape. It's just taking in the one input into here and it's just the switch is now on the top one. On the, to this one which is at true as you can see you can highlight over there it says true um, so we've got no edge damage and then if I want to have some edge damage I can just click that and then I can just bring it back and then I can alter it with the transforms if I want to add further edge damage in or not so that's an extremely useful node and especially if you're going to use this in, a, in another graph because you can expose the parameter of the switch grayscale so if you're using this in another substance graph the, you, when you um, bring that into there you'll be able to if I right click and go expose the parameters I can then choose I want to expose the switch and just give it a prefix of say um, edge damage okay uh, probably it's best if I spell it correctly I mean that's really bad I don't think I was looking at the keyboard <laughs> so that's, that's edge damage um, so for the switch and if I go okay I can no longer change it here but if I bring this leaf generator graph into a, a new graph then it will be exposed in the instance parameters here so instead of coming into here and having to change it each time I can just do it from the outside in a separate graph I hope that makes sense um, so that's an exposing a parameter so that switch grayscale is great for turning on the damage or turning off the damage and then we've just got a blend node here to blend them together and then we just bring in that to here where we're going to start to look at doing a directional warp and shaping the actual leaf to give it kind of the, the bends and everything okay but I'm, I'll come back to that one in a second now I know it's quite a complex graph but I hope you're keeping up with it. Now let's have a look at this one. So this is Weave Generator. So if I go into here type in Weave, we've got all different kinds of weaves. Now again it's just a case of dragging and dropping this into here and then you can change the amount of weaves that you wish that you want to have. So you can see if you're making some sort of wicker basket or something like that it can be quite quick. Um, Again, you can give it different kind of shapes. So what I did was with this one, I want to make these these veins that come off of the um, the main stem. But there's kind of two types. There's the stronger veins here, and then there's these really small ones that are kind of on the leaf as well. But first, I want to tackle the the bigger veins there. Now they don't come off sort of like together exactly they don't come off sort of like angles like this the leaf I was looking at they're kind of slightly offset as you can see there's one there and then there's one there so they're slightly offset so after a bit of experimentation I found that this weave generator was quite good for doing that so if I double click into here if I give it a tiling of just one so if I pull this up you can see it's tiling more in the Y axis if you give it a, a, a tile in X of two and just pull the shape to say 13 you can start to see we start to get kind of like an offset kind of feel to these lines because in effect all these veins are just just lines so what I wanted to do then was I inverted it to grayscale so that they'd actually stick out a little bit uh, within the height map and normal map then we go into the transform 2d nodes again and what I'm doing this time is I'm slightly offsetting them so I've got some control on where these veins are going to be placed on on each side okay now this is a very useful node it's called histogram scan if I type in hiss you can see it's the histogram scan node there this is brilliant for controlling position um, within the actual um, levels gradient so if I start to pull this down you can see it starts to make the the veins disappear you pull in the position switch but if I start to pull it upwards I can really make them quite strong so this histogram switch well, it's not switch, well the histogram scan sorry is really useful for giving intensity to certain things or not giving intensity and the contrast again just makes it obviously more contrasty or less so I've normally leave that roundabout there for this but then what I needed to do was because it was going up the leaf I needed to skew it I need to skew these actual lines so what I went to look for is uh, I can't type today for some reason SK <laughs> skew skew grayscale so I dragged one of these into here and 
obviously what what I wanted to do was for these lines or one one of these um sides to control one side these lines to be on one side and these lines to be on the other side so what I needed to do was skew them both different ways so that I would get this kind of like v kind of shape so I got the skew grayscale in horizontal and ramped up the amount to 0.95 and aligned it center and I also did that again for the other one and connected them together so now we're starting to get this kind of skewing pattern going through uh, for each of the lines but because of the veins we also needed to give them some sort of organic feel so that's why I brought in a warp node so the warp node again if you press the space bar is down here so what the way that this works is so if you imagine that we're looking at this top part here and this is the warp node that's the input into there so and um, if i click that you can see you can increase intensity and you can see it's starting to warp a lot or it starts to come back down so I'm, i'll leave it where it was about 0.51 and but it also needs a gradient input so the gradient input is a purling noise now that can be found again within the noises so if you go down should be yeah, there it is where is it yeah purling noise zoom there's plasma purling noise one you can try all different ones the thing with substance designer is it's all about experimentation and seeing what you can get out of different things and in different combinations and the purling noise was useful for this because you can see how it's starting to make these um, lines sort of contour and bend around the actual purling noise itself now Obviously, we only need one of these nodes because we've got two warps for each side of the lines. But what I'm doing is, is I'm just using the one purling noise. So another thing with Substance Designer is try and be as optimized as possible whenever you're working in there. And you'll find you'll go back to graphs and you can find quicker ways of doing things and taking out some nodes that you didn't need. But at the time when you're creating it, you're kind of just experimenting. So you're just throwing things together. Now, the next thing to do was I needed to kind of blend the 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 v tapering in effect so i needed to eradicate this side and eradicate this side and using a histogram scan and a gray scale node so again we've got the sorry a gradient node so if we go into here for putting gradient you can see there's two gradients gradient linear two and one i needed the one because i needed to go half and half so i needed black and white so I've used this gradient scale. Now you probably saw earlier that this was docked into this area here. If it's only going into one input, you can dock things by pressing D for delta on the keyboard. As you can see, if you keep pressing D, it'll dock it. So that keeps the graph a little smaller and a little more cleaner. But for demonstration purposes, I'll show you here. So this is the gradient. So what I've done with the good old histogram scan is I've just done a position of 0 0.5. And you can see it kind of moves up. And you can see how it's starting to break the actual veins in the, um, the leaf itself. But at 0 0.5, it's giving us half and half. And if I put that blend on add sub, it'll just show us the top half of this and the bottom half of this within that blend node. Again, I've grabbed another histogram scan. And this is really, again, just trying to control how much the veins are showing through and giving them some contrast. And then I inverted grayscale to uh, obviously make them, now what I was doing is making them dig, dig into the actual um, leaf itself. But then that gets converted towards the end back the other way. But you do need this invert grayscale at this point. So now th this section here, okay, so this section is controlling the main veins in effect. That section's controlling the shape, and this section is just adding in these very, very smaller kind of uh, veins and surface detail to the actual leaf itself. And all this is, is a cells 2. Again, um, I think this is actually in patterns. Let me have a look. Yeah, um, might not be, might be in the other one. Cells 2 which is there if you ever need to find something just type it in there so cells 2 and I've got a transform 2d which is just slightly skewing it just to give it some detail um, within the leaf itself in just keeping it non-uniform in effect and I've also got a levels command so the levels can be found by pressing spacebar and levels is here with the levels what I'm doing at the moment I'm just crushing in the whites to there because I don't want it to be too intense when I put it into the blend because I don't want it to stick out of the leaf too much it's more it's more kind of just like a very subtle surface detail and I'm doing the same up here again and I'm blending two in together so these are the veins coming in after we've set that up 
We've now I've got a levels just to bring them down so they're a little more subtle. And then this is where I've got the blends coming in for these um, surface veins and just adding a further one here. So you can start to see, if you can zoom in, I don't know if you can see it okay, but you can sort of see the veins are there and they're very subtle on the surface of the actual leaf. Okay, so the next thing to do is I wanted to get the, the main veins to be more skewed in effect. I wanted them to, to really go up the leaf. Um, and I found a way of doing this was invert grayscale back again. So now we've got the, the white coming in there. So the, the, they will be sticking up, but the, the actual surface veins again will be um, very subtle indeed. Then I've got a transform 2D and I'm actually just bringing up one side. If I, if I start to pull this down, you can see how it's affecting the veins. So I just wanted to kind of crush them up to one point like so. And they've still got a slight offset, but if you ever go too far, just press Control and Z, Control Z, and you can go back again like other programs. And what I wanted to do this time was use a directional warp. So if you spacebar, there's a directional warp here. And I wanted to kind of skew them along this sort of cone type shape, as you can see here. So I grabbed a polygon too. So it's the same the same sort of polygon as this one that we started off with, but I've kept it quite it's quite stock. It's got three sides. I've just there, uh, put the scale to 1.08, slight rotation so I can get the peak going upwards, and then a bit of a curve on it as well. And then in the transform 2D, I've just skewed it outwards. I've just really scaled it downwards. So we're just getting the top piece, which is kind of the cone. And in the directional warp, you'll see it's really pushing up these these veins now. So they're really more contorting towards the, the central stem and pushing upwards in a more organic feel. Um, and, I mean, the directional warp is not costly at all. None of these nodes are very costly at all. Um, we've got the Transform 2D here, because what I wanted to do, obviously I need to flip them the other way so that they're going upwards. And that's what that's doing there. So I just did the 90 degrees clockwise and counterclockwise. And then we finally get back to blending in the veins and the main stem, because this is the stem here that's going through the middle. All it is is just a shape node. Now this is a, this is a really good great node. It's got various shapes in it. So if I type in shape and drag this in here, you'll see the square. There's a disc, paraboloid, bell, and there's lo lots and lots of different things that you can use to kind of try different things out. And all you got to do is just plug them straight into the Transform 2D or whatever other node you want to look at and see what you can do with them and experiment. So what I've done this time is I just took a shape, I just took a square and I did a Transform 2D and I made it extremely small, extremely small indeed. Um, and that then is blended in to this shape here. So this is the shape now that we've got. So we've got the main shape that we created from there with some of the edge noise with a switch. This is the the main veins, the, the larger veins on the actual leaf. These are the subtle, subtle veins here. And also, uh, then we'd be giving it some more of a skew to make it a little more um, organic and also going more, more kind of up the leaf in effect. We've also got the stem in the middle that we've just created from just a square and transform that together. And we've blended that together into here using a multiply with a low opacity. So now we've got the shape, the damage and the stem. Okay. So now what we need to do is blend in those, those veins as well, as you can see them here. Uh, I hope you can see that. You can probably just see that one there. So that's going into here. So now we blend in the shape and the veins. So that's the, this is really what it's all about, is just blending things together. So this is now bringing all this, this point to this area here. And now what we've got is a directional warp. Now this is something I'm looking into as well, because at the moment, um, the way that this is working, the directional warp, if I press D to bring that back, I'm using um, the shape node again. So I'm using this shape node here, um, and I'm using cone and tiling it one so you just go back to the other one look for cone at the bottom there tiling it to one there we go and as you can see we've got a size there 
um, a rotation of true. There we go. With a rotation of true, then it kind of gives it a 45 degree offset and uh, it'll show the other parts of the the bell there. Now the thing is when you're when you're experimenting you're trying to put all this together sometimes you're just pressing things and just to, just trying to see what's going to actually happen and uh, sometimes it can get quite confusing but for this what I needed to do I needed to have kind of like a, a circular shape to give it some sort of bend within it. So now because we've we're bringing all these all these components together into this one node here this ble this um directional warp what i can do now if i turn this you can see it's kind of conforming to the to the shape of the bell to the shape of this underneath and that allows you to instead of having to go into zbrush and re-sculpting a leaf and doing all that you can go in and you can just give it whatever skew you wish and it gives it obviously some randomization and if you've got a lot of leaves on on a ground plane this is great because it just allows you to um, create all variations and different ones extremely quickly and apply them to a ground plane instead of having to sculpt every one and then just kind of scattering them out perhaps say in ZBrush with a insert multi mesh brush so this is really really fast and you've got so much control still love ZBrush but this as I say is just great for randomization quickly so I'm going to dock that back into there. Now, the the issue that I've got at the moment is when I'm creating this directional warp and moving it, you can see the stems not moving with it. Now, you're probably thinking, why do I just combine them together and have one directional warp? Well, the reason is I want to keep this separate because I want to texture this middle stem. Just I want to isolate it to texture it, so you can see it's like a different colour to the rest of the leaf. So at the moment, I'm having to if if I create that. Um, if I change this directional warp here, I just need to change this directional warp to reflect the exact same the figures and numbers. There's probably a way of doing it where it'll just update together, and that's something I need to ask the algorithmic guys about. But for the moment, this is how I'm having to, to create this leaf generator as it is now. I'm having to have two directional warps that reflect the same uh, number to ensure that they are obviously contorting together and that's why it's got the same shape in the other directional warp as well so then we've got the um the transform 2d because at the moment the leaf's looking quite quite long i didn't want it as long as that so what i've done is i've created a transform 2d and i've just pulled it in and squished it downwards like so um and just to get, make it a little more stout and also that's got to reflect again with this uh, with this stem now, one tip here is, if I if I did this and pulled it down, it'd start to by default it'd start to tile uh, up at the top and at the bottom, and we don't want that. So to stop something from tiling within a transform 2D node, uh, you can go into here, go to absolute, and then it op this then highlights, and you can change the tiling from H and V tiling, vertical tiling, or horizontal tiling. And just put it to no tiling so that when you do start to scale this down, it won't tile at the top or the bottom. So that's extremely useful as well. So now what we've got going on here is I wanted to kind of give it a very slight bowing effect. So it, it was kind of, it's dipping down at the sides and it's a bit higher at the top within the height map. And again, that's just created if I just press D on the keyboard. Okay, just move that from there to there. So all this is is just again... Um, a gradient, a gradient that you can find in here, but this time linear 2 instead of the linear 1, because obviously I want it to kind of have that gradient going from dark to white, white to dark, and then I did a transform 2D, and I just skewed it in slightly, so that the leaf will then just show within that section there, and then I've inverted the grayscale, as you can see, so it's just going into there, and that's re mainly for the blend. So when I put it on su on subtract, it then sh you can see kind of the darks at the side and then the white through the middle. So pressing D, we can dock those back into there. So now at this point, we've pretty much got our height map for our leaf, and then what we need to do is give it some colorization. And this is what the top se this top section is doing here. So the first thing I need to do is I need to have a mask. So this is my mask here. So as you can see, that is being generated um, going into a histogram scan. 
okay that good old histogram scan at a position of one so we're only getting the whites and then you've got the black in the background and I'm just taking that out of here the reason I'm taking out of this node is if I change the directional warp it will then change the mask as well at the same time so there we have our mask so what I'm doing first is I'm going to start texturing the the base of the leaf so this is my uniform color to get a uniform color space bar and it's there under uniform color so you put that into there if you click in here you can change kind of you can probably just see it slightly changing on the leaf itself this is kind of like the base background color and I've also put black because I want black around the sides so that's good for if you want to extract the alpha or anything like that um, the next thing what I'm doing, oh yeah, so in the histogram scan here, the mask is being plugged into opacity. When you plug it into a blend node of opacity, okay, the the white is going to be at the top, so as you can see, the white is showing through the green, and the black is in the background, so where the black is in the background here, as it does in Photoshop, just using uh, a mask as you would do in the layer stack. So the next thing is I want to add a little bit of variation onto the onto the leaf uh, surface itself. So again, the same mask is going into here, and then I've got a black and white spots B and W B and W black and white spots there under noises. I just drag one of those in because that gives you kind of this noisy kind of effect. And what we can use that for is we can use that to kind of create a mask again. As you can see, this is going into the opacity slot here. And we're on a multiply this time because what I'm doing is I'm multiplying this color into here. And so we've gone from the base color, we're blending in some tones from that point. And then as we're going through, uh, we're going to add another one. But this time what I did is I used a curvature node here. So this is the curvature node. Actually works on the normal map, which I'll come to in a second. But that's like the end goal for doing creating the normal. And then we're creating the curvature map off there. So the whites are kind of like the highlights in effect. So what I'm using this curvature node for, you can change the intensity, you can also change the format. But what I'm using it for is just to get some a detail into the veins because I wanted to add a little bit of color into the veins. And you can see where it's white. We're going to start to get some of the color going into that area. Area. So I've inverted the grayscale here. Okay, so we just got that going into here with a multiply. And then I know it looks complicated from this point. I mean, all the time what we're doing is we're just making sure we're using this mask so that we're only hitting the Y area. And for these blend nodes, these are going into the top and we're using a multiply. And this is what we're getting from here, blending in these the curvature with an invert grayscale. Okay, so that's the curvature, and then we're going into the blend node here, and now you can start to see using that and using this color, I can start to get some sort of like highlights on onto the actual leaf itself. It's actually kind of doing the shadowing for it, not too much because obviously we're looking at a physical base rendering, but it's kind of just giving it a bit of definition within to the texturing. So the next point from there was I wanted to give again some more um, detail within to the veins. So this time I thought, well, I'll, I'll kind of use the transform 2D from where we started to skew the veins. But obviously we need to use it from this point because that's that's the way that these veins are now facing. So I've got this one, okay, going into here. Now this is a levels command, and that that's just to, as you can see, it's changing quite a bit. If I just move that back to where it was, in fact, Control Z, you can see I'm using this one into here, another blend node. It's just purely all blend nodes as it goes along, just adding things on top of each other. We've got the mask, so we only get it shown within the actual Y area. We've got these kind of veiny bits going into there, and then we've got like a brownish color this time on the uniform color. And as we go in, we can start to see we're getting some of the brownish kind of tones going into the leaf on the actual veins. And then <laughs> we've got another blend node going in again. We just um, this time what we're trying to do is we're taking it from here this time because what I'm doing, mate, I'm always experimenting, seeing what happens if you take it from different blend nodes uh, instead of just the same ones all the time, all the same kind of noises. And what I'm using this one for is this one here when we created that black and white spots, we had that kind of noise going on. Well, if I plug that into a histogram scan and change the position and contrast, we can start to kind of like isolate just certain areas where we want sort of like this yellow damage on the actual leaf and where the darkness is on the actual leaf there. So 
this is just controlling that kind of like surface yellowy kind of damage so the way that this works is it's going two ways actually it's going down here because it's adding in to the actual um the actual height map and the normal map because we need to reflect where the holes the small holes will be um again um we're using another histogram scan here so if i increase the position you can see we're starting to get more damage onto the leaf and if i go the other way we're getting less and that's what this histogram scan is doing here this one's great as an overall control but then when we start to go into the actual normal map i've got even more control with the second histogram and they don't cost hardly anything and the same same here with i'm inverting the grayscale because i want them to actually go in to the actual leaf itself because if it if it was left like that then it would actually stick out of the leaf i want them to go in so that they're black and that's going into this blend node here which is blending in with just the base shape that we had after we'd done all the blends together of the height map so then we've got the noise and that noise is then just being outputted to a height normal blender the normal is just a normal color itself um, I think actually you can find that under here normal I'm just plugging that into here because we want to in effect blend the height map with just a normal color so I just press D to dock that make sure it's open gel and then I can just change the intensity of the height of the normal map so that's how you generate your normal map we're getting it from the actual height map that we've created with this leaf going straight into here but what we can also use that for then we can use that normal map as we mentioned for the curvature over there as well now the histogram scan just coming back to this one where we've put on the actual surface damage so this is that kind of main histogram that we're taking from the black and white spots over here so we've we've created the damage but now we want to create the color so we've got a levels command and i'm just taking out some of the uh, the whites out of there just crushing those down a little bit so it's not as harsh we're blending that in again because we are blending that in with the the veins here we could have blended it in with something else but i've decided to blend it in with that one could have just blended it in with the straight mask see what happens if we do that yeah exactly the kind of same sort of thing um and then we've got this color here and this is for the main stem running um sorry for the damage that you can see around the areas where it's actually pitting into the actual leaf itself as it would do in reality and then what we've also got some more detail going on <laughs> so this time we've got a dirt six so if i just put dirt dirt six this is another node here um it's just the small speckles and it just gives it even more variation and i'm doing the same thing again with the mask going into a blend so we just get the speckles into there instead of using the black and white noise all the time we're trying something different and then I'm, i only want certain parts of it so I'm, this time i'm using the levels first just to take out um as you can see we're just making them a bit sharper um the whites creating some of the blacks going into a histogram scan just to control the uh, how much i want the position or not no position it's very subtle on the actual leaf itself and then this is this time blending in these colors into small speckles you can probably see these kind of colors here into small speckles pressing d just to take these out i've got my black and white spots again here but this time i'm just using a black and white spots to kind of blend these together so i don't want to kind of use just a certain part of it in fact i could use this one if i if again you always looking at making making the actual graph a lot more um optimized instead of that one i can use this one it's going to do the same go ahead delete that one so that's what you'll find you'll start to go through your actual graph and you can see along the way that you can actually optimize it as you go because at the time when you're creating it you're probably thinking oh, i need a black and white spot so i'm going to try this i'm going to try that and you forget that you've already got one so this is great uh, but now you can't dock that because it's going to two different nodes it's going to this blend node here and it's also going to this blend node here so you can't press d on the keyboard it won't dock anymore but that's fine because we, we can see exactly what's going on so this is the blend node here and we're just blending in two of these colors here we're kind of like a bluish gray and some reds blending those together using this noise mask that we've just created into the opacity and blending that in and then we're starting to get these kind of like small speckles everything's really subtle but once it all comes together it makes it look quite realistic and i think that's the key to it really now if we look at this one 
let's see what we're going with from here. Now this should be the stem. Yeah, so this is the stem. So I'm taking it from here because I want to isolate just the stem itself. That's why I've got two transform nodes and two directional warps. Because I'm trying to keep this isolated. But unfortunately I've got to keep make sure that the 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 details are the same on each of the um, nodes between these four as we mentioned earlier so the transform node is going into here okay so that gives us our stem I'm just doing a bit of a levels there to give it some more contrast well, I'll press D to dock that and then that's going into here and what we're doing now is we are kinda of blending all these together to to make the color of the stem so let me just open these up so D got a D, D, okay, uh, D, D, you've probably seen what I can do here, because uh, again, I've done it again, there's a black and white spots, but we don't, we can use the one that we've got here, we'll plug that into there, get rid of that one, so yep, we're optimizing as we're going along, which is great, um, and you'll probably come back to this graph in a, in, a, <laughs> in a few weeks time and still see things you can optimize, that's the great thing about it. So, histogram scan. Um, I'm just taking out some of the black and white spots because what I'm trying to do is just give a little bit of detail as it's going up the actual stem itself. Very hard to see, but I know it's there and it's very cost effective. So we've got some red tones and we've got the kind of the base uh, kind of brownish tones and we're blending that in and we're just bringing that in with like there we can see using this histogram scan. I can I can increase the position of that and add a little bit more in. You can probably see it just changing on the stem of the of the leaf there okay and then from this blend which is on an add linear dodge um, blending mode I'm just using the levels again just to give a bit of control to brine it up a little bit and a use saturation just giving it a bit more saturation into there also and then finally we get to this point here um, where we've got the leaf itself with all the spots and all the speckles and for PBR it's great physical based rendering there's no shadows or highlights or anything like that it's just pure color um, and again uh, so that's from the stem so that's the stem is the last part there and then this is the final output node we've got a hue saturation again just to give a bit of control on the lightness there and there you go and that's the actual leaf itself Okay, so you want to make sure that you look at the the charts, the PBR charts, and make sure that the luminance values are correct. Um, I've checked that, and that should be fine. Um, this part, this portion here, is actually the roughness um, for the actual physical base rendering. Quite basic, actually. It needs a little bit more work into it, but as you can see, where it's white, it's going to be um, non-shiny and quite a, a broad highlight. And where it's darker, you're going to start to get a bit of a shine. You can probably see if I just move it across, you can kind of see the shine there, where it's a little bit darker, but the stem isn't. So it's kind of just giving it a bit of variation. And the way that I created that was just taking um, the actual color before it goes into this hue saturation giving it a grayscale conversion so I'm taking it from RGB into gray if you press the space bar you can see it's there grayscale conversion so that'll turn an RGB into a grayscale pulling this into the levels just to um, brighten it up a bit because that's too dark it was too shiny I'm also adding in from here uh, some of the um, other details just give it a bit of surface variation within the roughness that's going into an invert grayscale because I wanted to where the damage was I wanted to make it quite white so that it wouldn't reflect as much I wouldn't have any shininess if you can see that's what we're getting there bringing the levels just to bring it back up again into the whites because it was getting quite dark again at that point and then I've got a blend here and this is for the stem and that's coming from that transform 2d again that's going into here and then that's just giving me sort of where there's going to be no shininess on the stem could add a little bit of variation into that as well and um, we've got one final node here if I just do this invert gray scale okay and that's just um, creating a mask so that around it is is uh, non shiny so the way that I'm doing that I'm just taking the mask itself inverting the actual mask uniform color of, of white because that's what I want it to be around the side that's being used as a mask but the other way around so it won't touch the leaf inside this time it'll just touch it'll just affect the 
the outer area and I wanted that to be white so there's no shiny edges or anything like that or any artifacting and that goes straight into the roughness there we've looked at the the normal map now this is the height so the height is just coming straight from here when we added in the final bit of damage so that's going into a height node so you can output all these maps and you can put them into a different program and then you've got a, a leaf that you could use in a, in a different program as a texture and ambient occlusion uh, you can actually find this in here taping am ambient occlusion um, that needs the height going into there and then you can control the actual spread of the the ambient occlusion itself uh, another way probably could be to to bake this out using Nold or something like that, using the height map, uh, sorry, the normal map in Nold and creating your own um, ca cavity maps and also the ambient occlusion if you want a little more control, um, you could use that. If not, you can use this ambient occlusion node and you can see that's the ambient occlusion. I've also separated it out as a mask as well, so you can take that mask in case you need that in some other program. And the metallic, obviously, it's just going to be black because it's a non-metal. Um, if you ever needed to add another output, um, we say you want another map generating, if you press the space bar and press output, you can see you start to get these attributes here. There's an add item. So if I click that, RGBA, diffuse, and then I can select an emissive, an ambient, a mask, a normal. So if I click bump, uh, I can turn that into a bump. And then you just make sure you go bump for the actual identifier bump for the label and then if I click on one of these you can see it says material under group and then you just put material under group plug in whatever you required into there right click and then view outputs in 3d view and then the out the 3d view will output this new output node you've got there so um, quite a, quite a large graph that one, um, but as you can see in the end, it, I think I think it looks quite quite nice. I think it it still work to be done on it, and you can always tweak forever because no piece of art's really ever done, is it? So, but yeah, I, I think I think it's getting there, and it's also showing that what you can achieve within uh, Substance Designer just using shapes now just one last tip if you wanted to say just call this the the shape area once you've finished and you want to clean everything up and if someone else was going to go into the graph and have a look at it they want to know what's going on if you highlight say this section which is the shape generation right click on one of the nodes and then there's add frame and that'll add a frame on kind of like um, UDK used to be, and still is I believe, is where you can add frames around your nodes in the material editor. So comment, I could call that shape gen. Oops. Shape gen. And then you can see, you can just drag these around and then obviously within within this box here then you know that this is the shape generation. You can put a description on what's actually going on, what's happening. So that could be quite useful here where I've got these four nodes that need to be the same. I could put a frame around those and then just put sort of like um, directional warp and just put ensure that both directional warps have same um, values, same as the transform 2D has the same values. And that way anyone going into there will know what's going on if they needed to change that but hopefully I can find a way so I can tie them together so you wouldn't have to do that anyway um, so yeah so in the end what you can do from this point is once you've created sort of like this is your shape gen this is your leaf okay you've now got this here so if I just go quick save all this is the leaf uh, generator the the parent package and this is the actual graph itself um, what I've got here is for example a grass test so this is something I've been working on previously um, just see again, just seeing if it's possible to kind of get an organic kind of grass feel with stones and rocks and a background um, ground feel to it. Um, and this was just created by a grass generator. So as you can see, this is the grass generator um, itself, and it should allow me to open the reference. And this is the grass ger generator itself. It's just creating one blade. I'm then giving it color giving it some uh, variations directional warp so the directional warp is making them bend and then it's just going into the roughness all there and then in another and then in the actual grass itself all I need to do is just grab like the generator like this just grab one and just bring it in to the actual um, graph itself and then I've got another piece of grass and I can overlay that 
as I'm doing here using material blends so you can probably see them all blending together from there so I've got two variants smaller larger and it goes along and then we've got the ground underneath and then we've got some stones and these are the stones um, and then I'm putting them in a splatter so that it's making them randomized and in different areas and then that just goes through and you got your normal map so what you could do with this point is you could take your leaf generator bring that into here and then you could have some small leaves just using the the, the splatter circular could have, could have um, multiple small leaves and then just give them all different colorizations and things and this is the power of substance designer nice and quick once you've made your, your generator then you're fine you can use that on loads of different projects get a database together so you're in a studio you can have a database of all these different generators and then the artists can just pick what they want and apply them to their ground tiling texture or whatever they want to use them for I hope this was useful. Um, it did go on quite a bit, but I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm hoping it's useful. And uh, I hope that you were able to follow along with what was going on. But go in there yourselves and just experiment and practice and see what you can come out with as well. Um, my website is uh, richardpipespiper.com. Um, if you need to contact me or anything like that, send me a message. I'd like to thank Eat3D for letting me do this tutorial today. And uh, yeah, grab yourself a copy of Substance Designer and uh, have a bit of a play in there and see what you can do. It really is, uh, it really is fun. Once you, once you, once you start getting a grip of the different nodes and everything, you'll have a great time. So I'm Richard Piper, aka Pipes, and thank you once again. Goodbye.